Hi there, my name is Will Townsend and I work for the Global CO2 Initiative. As a central focus of the organization, we seek to improve the way that people in the CCUS carbon capture, utilization, and storage sphere go about conducting economic and environmental assessments of emerging CCUS technologies. Today, I'll be introducing you to our exciting new tool, a dynamic calculator that takes as inputs a wide range of industrial parameters like raw materials, labor, CO2 equivalents, and water usage, and generates simplistic techno-economic analyses and life cycle assessments on the spot. This tool is powerful not only because it offers access to rapid integrated assessment techniques, but hopefully it can help unite people in the CCUS community around a standard way of practicing these analyses. If you haven't checked out the GCI's TEA and LCA guidelines yet, you'll find a clearly articulated mission of aligning people in their approach toward LCAs and TEAs of emerging CCUS technologies. The guidelines, which you can find on our website, are a major source of inspiration for this project. So let's get started. So to show you all how this calculator works, I've put in data from our carbonated concrete model, which is basically an Excel model that we made in the past year to show our techno-economic and life cycle assessment methods. It's one of five models that are on our website, and you can find them under the LCA and TEA tabs in the templates and video section. And you should check them out. There's another one on algae. There's one on chemical synthesis. So it's pretty cool. But this model is going to be using data from our carbonated concrete model. So here we have our raw materials. And essentially, you just put in each new raw material by clicking add additional material. And this is a pretty simple model. So we just have six raw materials, fine aggregate, coarse aggregate, which is just gravel, carbon dioxide from a direct air capture plant, Portland cement, water, and super plasticizer, which is a, is a chemical that helps with the curing process. And for each of these raw ingredients, I've put in the corresponding data points. And before you do one of these models, you have to decide what your functional unit is going to be. And what's meant by this is basically how much of your final product are you going to call one unit? And for this process, one meter cubed of carbonated concrete is a functional unit. So the amount of fine aggregate required per one cubic meter of concrete is 814 kilograms. Uh, likewise, we have 1,006 kilograms for the, of coarse aggregate per cubic meter of concrete. So those are the data points for that section. And then what's different about this column is the, the unit cost is not per functional unit, it's just per kilogram in this case. So it's less than one cent per kilogram of sand, fine aggregate, but that's just the cost. And you can find these costs online or in literature or in databases. Um, that's where we've found most of this information. And in, the, in our website, we have some resources um, like common databases that you can use to find these uh, data points. The third column, the kilograms of carbon dioxide per unit, this is a data point that you can find for any material you could even imagine. What this means is that in the process of creating, you know, mining and transporting one kilogram of sand, you release less than 1% of a kilogram of carbon dioxide. And that's just a data point that I've taken from a database. As you can see, Portland cement is the largest emitter of carbon dioxide. It's almost on a one-to-one -one ratio of weight, 0.9, you can see here. And as we'll see, when we look at these results in the end, that's one of the biggest uh, contributors to the carbon footprint of concrete. You can find these data points on, on different databases. And then finally, the water use factor, it's very similar to the emissions factor, where it's how much water are we using per unit of this resource. And in this case, it's in meters cubed per unit. This is sort of a, a tricky unit conversion, but basically what this is saying is that for every kilogram of fine aggregate sand that you mine, you're using 0 0.0018 cubic meters of water. But luckily, this can actually make some sense because of water's density. 0 0.0018 cubic meters of water is just 1.8 liters of water. That's, that's the data for the raw materials. Now I'm going to check out the labor parameters and the production parameters. Like the parameters above, uh, these can all be found in the templates that are included on our website for the carbonated concrete model. 
So here we have our hourly rate, wage rate for the employees at this plant, the number of shifts, and then these different coefficients, which are just percentages that you use to sort of make generalized calculations. And then the annual operating time is how much of the year is this plant going to be operating. And these are really, these are up to you uh, in your model, but these numbers are pretty standard for a factory. Of course, the shift positions just depends on uh, your process flow. In the machine parameter section, I have included the different machines and pieces of equipment that are necessary for the process I modeled. So here we have bulldozer, a hopper, a conveyor, a mixer, a bucket, which really isn't a machine, it's just a bucket, a crane, a wooden mold, environmental chambers, and a forklift. And the one part of this process that's different than just a normal concrete plant is the environmental chambers. And that's because in this process, we're taking carbon dioxide and we're basically just pushing it into curing concrete you know, as it cures so that once it's cured, it stores that carbon dioxide forever. And you need to do that at a pretty high temperature and pressure for it to work. So that's what the environmental chambers do. And in this model, I, I didn't really do a lot of scaling. So that's why we need 60 chambers for this process to work to make 800,000 cubic meters of concrete a year. Perhaps uh, this isn't the most realistic process, but it's just here to show you how you might carry out one of these models. And we'll see that the environmental chamber is one of the largest contributors, ironically enough, to the carbon footprint in this process. I should go through the, uh, the columns here. So these are all things that you can figure out either by looking at databases and also thinking about your process flow the number required, so this is how many bulldozers do we need to transport the raw materials into the factory. And that's just something that I figured out by thinking about the mixture that, that's needed for the concrete and how much concrete we're moving each year. And the same goes for all the other machines. So that's that column. Cost per machine, this is very simple. I just went on to Alibaba and I just found what seemed like average prices for each of these machines. And you can also look at at the capacity of each machine to make sure it's going to work in your process. And then the auxiliary equipment cost factor, this is essentially a factor that tells you how much extra it's going to cost for that machine to function in your factory. In this process, I've only included one of these factors for the environmental chambers. And then the annual electricity used per machine, you can calculate this by just looking at the power capacity of your machine. And then thinking about how long that machine is going to be running per year. That's how I got these numbers. And then since in my process, none of my machines use natural gas, I left that column blank. But if in your process, they, use, they do use uh, natural gas, there's pretty simple calculations you can do to figure that out. And then in this process, the bulldozers use diesel. And so that's what we call fuel oil. And that's going to be measured in liters. Um, and if I had any more machines in this process, I could just press add additional machine and then I could put that in there and its contribution toward the final cost, the water usage and the emissions in the process of creating one cubic meter of concrete would be shown, but that's unnecessary for right now. Underneath the machines section, um, we have the energy parameters. And this is not a dynamic part of the calculator. This just is essentially some data for you to use if you don't have your own. It gives you the cost per energy unit, so kilowatt hour, and then these other units down here of that energy. And it gives you the emissions associated with using one kilowatt hour or other unit of that energy. And then it also gives you the water use factor associated with it. And this is basically the same as the corresponding columns in the raw materials section. Basically, what's really cool about this part of the calculator is that it uses data that you put in the machine section to calculate the energy usage. And so all you have to put here is how much a kilowatt hour of electricity or a liter of diesel is going to cost in your model. And then you can choose what emissions factor and water usage factors you're gonna use for those energy sources. And it just multiplies through the template. So it's as simple as that. And what, what's really cool about this calculator is that 
all of these things that you might manually have to do in Excel, you can just do really easily here. It just simplifies the process of doing these analyses. So that's the extent of the data part of this calculator. And, and this calculator automatically produces these analyses. So here we have our result allocations. And this just tells us how much each section above is responsible for the costs. So labor accounts for 16% of the cost of producing one of these carbonated concrete units, a meter cube. This raw material coarse aggregate accounts for 20%. And that's probably because the gravel is a really primary ingredient in concrete. And the cement is also quite expensive and it makes up about a fifth of the mixture. So all these results make sense, but it's really cool to have uh, numbers put to them. On the right here, we have the emissions allocation. So this says for each one of these parameters, these are the nine most contributing parameters. Uh, what is their contribution toward the carbon footprint? In this case, we can see that by and far the most contributing ingredient is the Portland cement. And this tracks with what I know about the concrete making process. This is basically because of in the raw materials section, it uh, releases carbon dioxide from at a one-to-one -one ratio. And that includes the uh, the transportation and other processes necessary to get Portland cement. Um, underneath this, we have our water use allocation. This is basically the same as the um, two above. Here we see that the diesel uh, is most responsible for the amount of water used. Um, and then in this section, the calculator performs sensitivity analyses on parameters. The sensitivity analysis, it tests the final results sensitivity to changes in one of your parameters. So the final results, of course, are cost, water usage, and carbon dioxide emissions. That's what we care about in this model. And the sensitivity analysis asks, how much will those results change if we just slightly change one of our parameters, just something about one of our parameters? So here in this graph, in the legend, we have these different titles, fine aggregate costs, coarse aggregate costs, water costs, super plasticizer amount required. And as you can see on the x-axis, we have the percentage variation in this certain parameter and the unit manufacturing costs. So this graph tells us the sensitivity of the cost of a unit of our final product to changes in parameters. And the purple diamond here is the Portland cement cost. And as you can see, increasing the Portland cement cost by 50% or 40% or 30% has the largest impact on the final cost over these other variables undergo similar changes. The same sort of analysis takes place for the emissions sensitivity analysis. Um, this one is a bit more conclusive, as you can see. The line with the largest slope is the Portland cement emissions factor. And that's interesting. That, that gives us information about our model. So someone who's reading this report might look at it and say, well, if we can figure out a way to reduce the Portland cement emissions factor or find an alternative to Portland cement, it would drastically reduce the emissions associated with producing a cubic meter of carbonated concrete. And finally, uh, the last sensitivity analysis is the water usage. Um, and as you can see, you have these different lines with differing slopes that represent different parameters in the process. And our result right now is 13 meter cubes of water per cubic meter of concrete. But this ranges all the way from around 12 to 15 depending on how we modify our parameters. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, of course, this tool is pretty simplistic. It's not going to tell you everything you want to know, but luckily you can, you can take this, the, what this calculator has shown you and you can actually open it up in an Excel file. So you can press save as an Excel file and you can open it up and you can modify things to create a more complicated or comprehensive model. That's the end of this introduction. I hope this has been helpful. Please contact us uh, if you have any questions. Thank you.